Giannis and Ja Morant. Bucks and the Grizzlies here. We're going to pick this one up midway through the second quarter. The Grizzlies lead by seven. Morant gets blocked. But then look at this. He scrambles on the ground, taking control of the ball, all while sitting down. He throws it up to Santi Aldama. Here's Taylor Jenkins on that play post game. I don't know. I mean, I think there was maybe three or four defenders swarming around him and, and then just some ounce of me to say, is there going to be a lob that happens here? Because I could just see Ja dialing it up and I think he found, was it Santi uh, on the lob? Uh, I mean, we know Ja is so gifted and, you know, in those situations, he's got unbelievable creativity, ingenuity. Um, that's definitely one that I think should be on Sports Center highlight tonight. It's the last time you threw an alley-oop from your seat of your pants. Uh, I don't ever think I did, honestly. <laughs> I guess it's the first for everything. Well, a few plays later, Perk, the Grizzlies lead by seven. Morant has Gary Trent Jr. on him. Fakes with the pass and drains the three. You talk about a bounce back game, but look, if he can start knocking down those three point shots consistently, which I believe he will, it's gonna be dangerous for the rest of the league. So Damian Lillard missed oh. three. Morant, a little no look pass to Jaron Jackson Jr. A little street ball in this game. Just playing with the Milwaukee Bucks, just disrespecting them to the full. Morant becomes the first player for the Grizzlies with 20 points, eight rebounds, eight assists in the half, and this one getting a little bit out of control here. Damian Lillard really struggled. He was one of 12 from the field, 0 of six on three pointers, and then Morant moving up the court. He gets it to Zach Eady for the lob. Let's take a listen to John Morant after the game. I just came out and been aggressive, you know, took, took what the defense gave me, uh, talking with Dez, he told me, you know, I got to play like this, you know, each and every night, not even if it's not just a score, you know, being aggressive, making the right plays for us. Tonight, you know, everybody was kind of in a, a good rhythm and we got it going early and, you know, was able to withstand the lead. So on this show, we start with the winners in this one. We will get to the Milwaukee Bucks. John Morant had a good day. How good? He messed around and got a triple-double against the Bucks. He has 12 career triple-doubles. That's more than twice as many as any other player in Grizzlies history. And it was Halloween night. It got really spooky with Jaws' triple-double. He became the fifth player in NBA history to get one on Halloween and the first since James Harden in 2021. Morant also dropped 14 dimes on Thursday night to go with his 26 points. It was his 25th career game with at least 25 points and 10 or more assists, extending his Grizzlies franchise record. But let's hear from Doc Rivers on this loss. Everything's on me until we get it right. We got to fix this. Um, I thought we played with the right spirit. We didn't make shots, and, and you're going to have nights like that. But on those nights, we have to find a way to get stops. And I don't know how many times they advanced the pass and, and beat us down the floor. Uh, they did it probably eight to ten times on the few makes we did make. Um, you know, Morant had a free pass tonight as far as driving and attacking. Now he's tough uh, for everybody and probably tougher for us. Uh, so we got to do a better job of figuring out how to contain guards like that. All right, so all that's fair, but this is a historically bad start for Milwaukee. This one and four start is the worst by any Bucks team that Giannis has been on since he entered the league in 2013. And I hear that Detective Perkins, he spies something. I'm Kendrick Perkins, better known as Big Perk, and nothing gets past me. Freeze! Just when you thought it did get past me, there I am. I spy a problem. I spy it all. Carry the hell on. Talking about disrespecting the basketball guards, that's exactly what the Milwaukee Bucks are doing right now. Disrespecting the game with lack of effort. And Doc Rivers, I love you to death, but I don't want to hear your interviews. I said this earlier in the season, when the season first started. I know we five games in, but I did say this previously on NBA Today. Previously on NBA Today. Excuseless. That's the word of the day when it comes down to the Milwaukee Bucks this season. Last season, all I heard was excuses. This season, none from the Milwaukee Bucks. I don't want to hear them from Doc. I don't want to hear them from Dane. I don't want to hear from Giannis. Doc had the nerve 
to use the word spirit, that the spirit is in the right place. The spirit is not in the right place because if it was, you would make sure everyone would be tied together, stopping the basketball, sprinting back in transition. Look at this. No one is communicating. These are five veteran players, and John Morant throws a Magic Johnson no look for a wide open dunk. Here it is again. Five vets, I mean, a couple of vets, you should be on page. You got Giannis Antetokounmpo there, a lack of communication. A rookie, Zach Eady, he's 7'4". The world could see him. Wide open lane for a dunk. Look at Giannis clapping his hands. Bobby Porter shrugging his, shrugging his shoulders. Now, three-point shot. Everyone's supposed to be on the sprint, get back in transition. I want you to watch the Milwaukee Bucks. Look at Doc. He already knows, right? Everyone's supposed to be sprinting back. I feel sorry for Doc Rivers and because he could have been up here with me on television, but he does, he chose to do that. Doc, looks like he wants to be back on TV. Might as well come on over because right now your locker room is not hearing you. They're not feeling you. Something is going on and you definitely need to fix the problem. Oh, 